Time now, 40 minutes past seven. When Russia was confirmed as the host of the 2018 World Cup in Zurich yesterday afternoon, the disappointment for England's bidding team was clear to see. The bid only attracted two votes and was eliminated in the first round. So why, despite the best efforts of David Cameron, Prince William and David Beckham, did it go so spectacularly wrong? With us now, sports writer Matthew Said and John Keane from the Football Supporters Federation. We said in the lead-in it attracted two votes. It didn't really, did it? Because one of those votes was our own FIFA representative. So effectively, one person was convinced by England's bid. Matthew, do you want to just kick us off? Well, what, what do you make of what happened yesterday? I am absolutely, all these hours on, astonished. The FIFA Evaluation Committee described the England bid as strong technically, strong economically, it had a good social and development plan. The presentation universally acknowledged to have been a slick and progressive one, but only two votes. The only inference that I can draw is that this had nothing to do with football logic, nothing to do with sporting logic, but maybe something to do with FIFA's anger at media allegations against them. In my view, entirely justified media allegations, but they went after England in a fit of peak. And I think that is what will really disappoint and anger football fans up and down the country. Well, indeed, as a football supporter from the Football Supporters Federation, John, do you, did you sit there yesterday afternoon thinking, if only, if only British journalists hadn't start meddling? Um, I'm, I'm not sure um, it's wise to overplay the, the journalist's um, angle. Um, there seems to be some, some unwritten rules that FIFA were playing by um, that the FA, um, who acted with integrity throughout, um, seem to have come unstuck on. So, so really the problem is what were the rules that FIFA were playing? Because as Matthew says, the, the criteria for the, the bids um, were all met perfectly by England. The, the technical bid was the best of them all. The presentation was slick and so on. All the boxes were ticked, but for some reason England have done so dismally. So clearly there's something behind the scenes and I, I don't think it's, it's just the journalism. Well, what do you, so behind the scenes what do you think it was? Um, who can understand FIFA politics? There's, there, there's some set of unwritten rules that England weren't playing to but, but clearly the others were. It's, it's interesting that the, the, the next two um, World Cups have been awarded to countries which are, are very rich in terms of, of mineral wealth but very poor in terms of democracy and free press so yeah, who knows. Vladimir Putin stayed away and when when we knew that was happening people drew all their own, drew their own conclusions didn't they said it, it, was it a lack of confidence at the time that's what people thought it turns out he, he was supremely confident possibly because he knew that it was in the bag now if he knew it was in the bag how come we didn't know it was going disastrously wrong well you draw a very interesting point which is that the morning of the vote yesterday morning David Cameron described it as too close to call. So did Richard Scudamore, the chief executive of the Premier League. Very positive noises were coming out of our bid team for the simple reason that this small electorate of 22, the executive committee members, many of them were telling our bid team, eye to eye, we're going to vote for you. Now, what they were doing is lying and deceiving. And it is extraordinary that in those circumstances, our Prime Minister went there on the basis that we were in with a chance turned out that he was being deluded by people who were not being straight with our bid team. Uh, in, a way, in a way, it's happened now. Uh, the moment has passed. Uh, what, what, what do we do? What does it, uh, are we not... Uh, I mean, as a football fan, mm. there must be football fans out there thinking now, do you know what, in my lifetime, England will not get the World Cup. Is that how you feel now? Definitely. It, um, I, I was free and sent out of the room when the, the last World Cup final was on. So I'm, I'm never going to see a, a home World Cup in my life. You were lifetime. sent out of the room? Uh, yes, um, so that the men could concentrate on the, the football. I was sent shopping with my mother and oh. the other women so the men could watch the football. That, but sounds, that, that sounds like a moment you forever regret. I, well, it, I, I was too young at the time to understand it. But, but yes, that's, it, it's something that that's my only memory of a World Cup home. And there's never going to be another one in my lifetime and, and that's heartbreaking it's, it's such a wonderful experience do you think um, Matthew there's going to be a backlash uh, against this I mean from what John's saying you know that the, the idea and in the papers you know they're full of it the idea that something else was going on yes. was this a level playing field yeah. was this a fair bid process it, it, you know what what is the what is going to happen next well it's it's I think it's an entirely valid 
inference to draw that this was not a fair process. We didn't score highly in our own minds as an England bid. We scored highly according to the FIFA evaluation mm. report. It's not arrogance. It was them objectively describing the England bid as strong, robust, credible, has all the infrastructure in place. So had we got six or seven votes, we could say, well, you know, we were just outdone by Russia, which also had a, had a pretty strong bid. To have got two votes, mm -hmm. only one from a non-English member of Exco, I think it's an entirely valid inference that there's something slightly wrong. Besides, we knew in advance of the vote that FIFA is an opaque, a non-transparent, a rather arrogant organisation. The entire process was shrouded in secrecy, a secret vote, lots of allegations of quid pro quos and Machiavellian double dealings in back rooms. We can't really deconstruct what they were thinking as they made these votes because we have no idea. So FIFA, in my view, has always been ripe for reform, but I hope very much that this will usher in that process far faster. Thank you both very much for coming this morning.